My favourite scientist would be Rosalind Franklin. She's somebody who doesn't necessarily get the recognition she probably deserves. She was somebody who worked very hard in terms of elucidating the, the structure of DNA and actually identifying that it was a double-stranded helix. The time she was doing her work, she was working with other scientists and the main publication that was published in 1953 about the structure of DNA was published by Watson and Crick. They essentially got all the glory and Franklin's paper, although it was published in the same edition of Nature, has always been kind of overshadowed by Watson and Crick's work. And classically, when you teach science and you teach about the structure of DNA, it's Watson and Crick who get mentioned. And unfortunately, I always pull out Rosalind Franklin's name and the fact that she never, at the time, probably got the recognition she deserved. Rosalind Franklin was an X-ray crystallographer. She, she, I mean, she was a scientist, she was a chemist, biologist, kind of dabbled in lots of things, and certainly when she finished up her career, she was f working on a range of different things. But it was her X-ray crystallography work that ultimately was the important piece of work about DNA. This is a photocopy of her original Nature paper, um, published April 25th, 1953. And this is the so-called Photo 51, and it was from this photo that ultimately Watson and Crick fully elucidated the structure of DNA. Well, I think, I think this photo is a really exciting photo, mainly because I now know what it means. Now, I'm not an X-ray crystallographer, and I still look at that photo and think, I don't really entirely see how that tells me it's a double helix, but I am reliably informed that because DNA is a double-stranded twisted helix, the way the chemical arrangement sits, you should get this so-called Maltese cross. Ultimately what happened after the, the 53 paper, I mean molecular biology absolutely took off because suddenly instead of people having to work through genetics by breeding programs and actually working with chemicals that they didn't really understand, they suddenly knew the entire structure of DNA and they knew the chemical basis and they actually knew what it was capable of doing. And what was quite important was in the Watson and Crick paper they first of all postulated a possible copying mechanism. So this actually helped science as a whole understand how DNA could replicate and actually how organisms could actually replicate as well. Now unfortunately at the time, yes, she got a publication, she got several publications related to her work. She started to get medical problems and she died, I think it was in 1958, um, of ovarian cancer. And that ovarian cancer, people have postulated, that was probably related to the work she was doing in terms of X-ray crystallography. Well, Watson and Crick ultimately got the Nobel Prize for the discovery of DNA or the discovery of the structure of DNA. And by that point, sadly, Rosalind Franklin had actually died. So it's always been a point of contention. Would she have got it if she were still alive, or wouldn't she? Unfortunately, we're never actually going to know. When I'm teaching basic molecular biology to students, yes, I talk about that seminal Watson and Crick paper. I absolutely do, because that was a seminal paper in terms of molecular biology. But I always refer them back to Rosalind Franklin. Partly because I mean, she always was somebody that I thought got a bit of a hard time. Um, even just female academics at the time she was working weren't treated in the same way as we would be now. And she was in a closed shop essentially. She, she, wasn't, she didn't have access to all the sort of peer support that female academics would have now and yet she still managed to produce work that was groundbreaking. I mean there's various books being written about her. Lots of, sort of real feminists really support her in terms of what she did and what she produced. Um, there is in the States a university, a, sort of a medical um, science college that's actually named Rosalind Franklin. So she has been recognised and I think she's getting more recognition now. So I think in terms of her as an inspiration, she absolutely is. And she probably is part of the reason I actually got much more involved in genetics and interested in genetics. Mm -hmm.